Okay, creditors reconciliation. Clear Traders buys goods on credit from Mariti suppliers. So we've got our creditors ledger and we've got our statement of account from Mariti suppliers. So they are our creditors. We are Clear Traders and we are buying goods from Mariti suppliers. 2.2.1, use the table provided. So this is the table over here for 2.2.1 to indicate changes to the creditor's ledger account as well as the creditor's reconciliation statement. Okay, uh, on the 31st of July, 2018, your end. So let us have a look. So A, the incorrect entry for debit note 674, debit note 674 in the creditor's ledger account of Mariti suppliers relates to the correct credit note of 741 on the statement. So if you look very carefully, there is a difference here. 8,640, 6,840 has been a major error. So this 1,800, it needs to go to the debit side. So as a plus 1,800, the difference is 1,800. And we need to increase this amount on the debit side of the creditor's ledger of Clear Traders. So this would be a plus 1,800. Two, invoice 2A2 was incorrectly reflected in the account of Mariti suppliers in the creditor's ledger. The goods were purchased from Genesis suppliers. So 282 is 40,950. So it was incorrectly reflected in the account of Mariti suppliers. It was purchased by someone else. So we subtract that 40,950 from our creditor's ledger. Invoice 360 was incorrectly recorded on the statement from Mariti suppliers. So invoice 360 is 20,250. And invoice 360 here is 50,250. So there's a difference here of 30,000. So this wouldn't affect our creditor's ledger. It affects our statement of account. And the difference between that 50,250 and the 20,250 is gonna be 30,000. So a plus 30,000. Like you don't even need to write the plus. You can just leave it out. Uh, but for the negatives, you would need to put it in brackets. Okay, that's C. Let's have a look at D. So Mariti suppliers also purchase goods on credit from Claire Traders. So our creditors are purchasing goods from us. And Claire Traders has transferred a debit balance from the debtor's ledger. The journal voucher here was 570. And Mariti will offset this on the next statement. Offset, not the rapper that had a baby with Cardi. Cardi. Okay, I was, uh, was going to start rapping like Bodag Yellow. Um, but I realized that I have to be serious as an accounting tutor in this video. So, yeah. And I can't say bad words as well. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble with YouTube. Okay, so offset. Look, so let's just say, you know, this is you and this is your friend. Now, your friend needs to borrow like a quick hundred rand. You know, they need to buy their lover like roses for Valentine's Day and they want to go all out. So they owe us a hundred rand. And, you know, they buy this on February 13th. And then on Valentine's Day, you're like, hey, dude, like, I need to buy something quickly for my lover. Like, can you just, you know, like, give me a quick 20 rands? And the dude's like, okay, um, I'll give you 20 rands, but we can just, like, offset it from the amount that I owe you. So here's your 20, and I'm just going to offset that amount. So now I owe you 80 in total. So that's what it means to offset something. So with D... If we look at this 570 amount, it's 5,400 in the creditor's ledger. Now, from our ledger, we transfer it to our statement of account because there is this inter-transaction between Mariti suppliers and Claire traders. So from 5,400 in our creditor's ledger, we subtract that amount in our statement of account. So minus 5,400 because there was like an inter-trade uh, between our creditor and us. The transaction on the 24th of July 2018 is for merchandise returned to Mariti suppliers. So that's on the 24th of July 2018. It's this 8,100. It's been lit listed as a credit note, that 8,100. That's a mistake. So we should remove it from our creditor's ledger and we remove it again. It's for merchandise that has been returned. We didn't return anything. It's merchandise that's been returned. So that's a massive issue. That 8,100 means that we return something, but it's actually someone returning it to us. So it's a double entry. We take it out and then we take it out again. Um, and if the statement reflects transactions up to 25 July, 2018. So if you look very carefully, um, we would exclude all the amounts after 25 July. So nothing here. We've already factored this in. This 31 
July transaction, the check-in discounts, um, that's 77,190, we would simply take it out of our statement of account, 77,190. And now we just add up our columns, so we get 92,470 here, and on this side, 92,470. Look, if they're different, just write the same amount and you get a nice method mark. 2.2.2, the internal auditor insists that direct payments, EFTs, must be used to pay suppliers. Explain one reason to support this decision. Well, it's quick. I hate when it does that. It's quick and easy. One internal procedure to ensure control over the system. Well, okay, look, let's just go back to the reason, right? So it's quick and easy. It's easier to monitor. It's efficient, convenient. And internal procedures that we can utilize to ensure control over the system. Um, well, because it's quick and easy, it's efficient, maybe we only allow senior personnel, so senior staff, to authorize or make these internet payments. Or maybe two people to authorize an EFT transaction. So we have division of duties here. Like, you make the payment, and then, well, maybe not your friend to just avoid you know, any collusion or anything, but someone independent just to check what you've done. Okay, so anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. Uh, refer to invoice 301. It was discovered that the store manager, Vernon, had signed a fictitious order. Ooh, we've got some bad things here. Fictitious, that doesn't exist. Uh, form, and took the goods for himself when they arrived. So he's misusing his position of power as store manager. Now, besides dismissing Vernon, provide one suggestion for action to be taken against him and to prevent this problem in future. So action, uh, maybe we could have a disciplinary hearing, uh, lay a criminal or civil charge, suspend him, demote him, and a suggestion to prevent this in the future. Again, this idea of division of duties. Make sure that there are two people checking it. You can't just let one person do everything because you know that could lead to a bit uh, of risky business going on. Or maybe stock records to be updated with every invoice or simply um, ensure that goods received at the gates are supported by order, uh, by an order form and invoice or regular stock checks, stock counts uh, to compare to the records. Okay, not too heavy of a section, you got this. You can do it and just make sure your creditor's ledger and statement of account balance.